Well, thank you so much for your company this morning. We're going to get straight into this in terms of Israel because I'm just going to give you a few of the things that have happened in the last uh, 24 hours. We've heard about that hostage, an 85-year-old hostage who died after not being treated or fed. This is just, it's, bar it's horrendous, it's barbaric. What has an 85-year-old done to deserve that? Absolutely horrendous. The truce, uh, the, uh, uh, the IDF, the Israeli Defence Force, the Israeli army basically, has said that the truce has actually allowed Hamas to regroup. Israel has killed two Iranian officers in Syria as well, that's also happened. Aid trucks have entered Gaza for the first time since the truce. And the IDF, the Israeli army, has uh, struck 400 targets in Gaza in 24 hours. They really are bombarding Gaza. But I'm interested in terms of what Mossad's been up to and whether there is any sense of, of any hope whatsoever in terms of this bloody and horrible conflict ending. Uh, Domitilla Sagramasso is a lecturer in the Department of War Studies in King's College in London and we, we, I'm delighted that she is with me this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we, we've talked to a lot of reporters on the ground um, over, you know, every day basically we do that but I wanted to get an academic perspective on this because I know this is your bread and butter. What did you make of the fact that Mossad were actually negotiating or having some form of negotiation with Hamas in Qatar? Just tell us about that, how that would have worked and whether that's something that is very normal, uh, that, that would have definitely happened in these circumstances or whether that is something that surprised you. No, I think it's not surprising at all. I think that uh, from the very moment when um, the you know this um, a terrorist attack took place uh, and hostages were taken, uh, lines of communication were probably opened and the Mossad was probably involved in trying to negotiate uh, the release. Uh, this is happening, as we know, in Qatar. The US and the Egyptians are um, intermediaries in these discussions. Uh, also, uh, many countries such as the United States, which have um, had, um, you know, I mean, still may have uh, hostages and may also be interested in a release of them. So I think that uh, this this is not unexpected. It also may you know made sense to hold these um, talks in Qatar because that's where um, uh, part of the leadership, the political leadership of Hamas, is uh, located. Uh, this has of course created tensions, and the Israelis had to promise uh, the Qataris that they were not going to kill any Hamas leader in Qatar. Um, so I think that this is uh, sort of this is uh, completely understandable, and there is a lot of pressure in Israel at the moment to continue with efforts to release the hostages. So uh, Netanyahu's uh, government had no real option other than try to uh, work this channel of uh, communications and negotiations at the same time that it, it is pursuing uh, its a military campaign. It's interesting, of course, uh, as you say, those lines have to be opened up and so on uh, to get that negotiation. There has been a ceasefire for a few days, but really it seems uh, Hamas, uh, Israel claim, have bro broke the ceasefire before uh, the end of it. For example, there has been bad faith towards the end of the ceasefire. Is there any prospect of getting another one, do you think, or, or some form of resolution to this crisis? Where does it go now, do you think, Domitilla? Well, there, there are two questions which are interlinked. One is the fate of the remaining hostages. I think we're talking about 136, if I'm not mistaken. So I presume that negotiations uh, might restart. I think that efforts are going to be carried out because there is, as I said, pressure inside Israel. Uh, there was a big demonstration last night uh, in support of giving, uh, releasing the hostages top priority. So I think that this might be a temporary moment, but the requests probably of Hamas uh, uh, are that so that, um, you know, maybe the Israelis are not able to agree to them. There's one question about release of women and children, which was promised and Hamas has not delivered. So yes, I think and, 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 and actually, they've, they've, they, if I think I'm right in saying they've separated mothers from their children as well, in, in which they said they wouldn't do. There is also the question of whether they, these um, hostages uh, are alive, because as we know, yeah. a few days ago, it was uh, admitted by Hamas that two children and the mother had been actually killed. And and this also becomes a PR um, fiasco for Hamas, which in a way in this release of hostages has is gaining is gaining some popularity, especially inside Gaza, uh, because the release of Palestinians 
who were in Israeli prisons, you know, gives them some kind of, uh, you know, um, victory for the attack they carried out. So mm -hmm. they can argue, yes, this is terrible, but at least at the same time, you know, we are, uh, you know, we are getting uh, some of our you know, uh, civilians and, and soldiers back. So despite the, the, the bombing of uh, of Israel, you know, there is a reason for this. Of course, I think what Hamas is going to try is going to extend, uh, to push for an extension of the ceasefire. And at the same time, it's probably going to keep some hostages in the very end to either guarantee uh, their future of immunity, because I think that's very much probably in Hamas's mind that the leaders get some form of immunity. Uh, and that maybe they're able, there's talk that they might be able to leave Gaza and settle somewhere else. But the big question, of course, the second big question is what is going to happen with Gaza? Who's going to rule Gaza? Yeah, well, we, we certainly heard from, from Netanyahu that, uh, that Israel will have some sort of security rule when this ends. How do you think, what do you think that looks like? It's difficult to envisage what it really means. Uh, and here is where there are a lot of discussions and debates and different propositions. Uh, the Americans have made it clear uh, that they do not want um, the Israelis uh, either like uh, ruling Gaza again or uh, re-establishing a siege around Gaza or reducing the territory of Gaza. Uh, but the Israelis, it seems from what I've read, and I don't know if these are verified reports, they seem to be uh, uh, un, you know, un, inter, unconfirmed that the Israelis are thinking of uh, reducing the population of Gaza to sort of a, a, a bare minimum and maybe forcing Palestinians uh, out of Gaza, sending them to Arab countries. There was even reports that they might be thinking of sending them, that they would end up, you know, in Europe. So, uh, you know, opening up the, the the maritime border so that they would just leave. Uh, I think this is a proposition that is not going to get a lot of traction among Israeli allies. So I think that uh, it's very difficult to imagine whether the suggestions of the Israelis are going to be accepted uh, and to what extent pressure can be exerted on Israel uh, to the extent that, uh, you know, they agree to some kind of negotiations on the future stages of Gaza, yeah. which involves a Palestinian, some kind of Palestinian rule, not the rule of Hamas, maybe not uh, the current leadership of the Palestinian Authority, but maybe other leaders and their figures, their names that are being um, sort of um, mentioned yeah. uh, informally. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, this is really where the crunch of the matter lies. Mm. And of course, just bombing Gaza, it's not going to unfortunately resolve the question. And yeah, you need to be yeah. very careful that that does not lead to a, a new generation of terrorists, not just in the Middle East. Well, in Israel, f Gaza. further further people will be ra radicalized, I'm sure, as a result of that, um, uh, which is an unintended consequence. Uh, Domitilla uh, Sagramasu, thank you very, very much indeed. Lecture at the Department of War Studies at King's College in London. First class analysis there. Very, very interesting.